So I don't even really have to give much of an introduction. You've all heard of Thailand. This country is the 21st century tourism powerhouse that took the world by storm. Will I do my best for this in Thai your video? Yes, I am. So if you're feeling crabby, don't Phuket what time it is. Porn. It's time to learn geography. No! Due to continuity issues, we have to film this out of sequence. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Get your Geography Now merchandise at geographynow.com. It's not selling out if it's your brand. Thailand, the land of smiles. And it is also the home of Julie, our next co-host. Say hi, Julie. How you doing? Yay! Oh, also we got uh, Anya and uh, Solom. They're also gonna be in this episode. Later on in the uh, episode, you'll see them. Uh, anything you wanna say to the subscribers about Thailand? You should visit. Also. <laughs> 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 We're it. not Taiwan. Don't get it. Don't get it confused. No. No. All right? Not confused. Let's pad see you it, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> They are the crossroads of the Sinosphere and Indosphere and the Malay world. And then they have the inland mountains and the coastal waters. And there's so much going on. First of all, the country is located in Southeast Asia on what is commonly referred to as the Indo-Chinese Peninsula, bordering four other countries and is shaped like Dumbo the flying elephant with a really long disfigured trunk. In that long disfigured trunk, they have a long bi-coastal access section on the Kra Isthmus, shared with Myanmar that straddles the Annaman Sea to the west and the Gulf of Thailand to the east. This trunk squeezes at its narrowest point near the city of Khan at only about 7 miles or 11.5 kilometers wide. That's not even the narrowest section though. At the very end of the border with Cambodia at the Trat province, they have a section that is only 450 meters wide until you hit the border from the coast. Oh, and speaking of provinces, the country is made up of 76 of them, known as Changwat. Keep in mind, all the provinces are also named after their capitals or namesake cities, so you don't have to memorize any anything extra. Also, each province has its own flag. They look pretty cool, usually based on Buddhist undertones. In addition, there are two special districts, which are cities that act with the same administrative level as a province, the capital Bangkok and Pattaya. The capital and largest city of the country, of course, is Bangkok, classified as one of the world's mega cities with a larger metropolitan population at around 14 million as of 2022. Here, of course, you can find the two busiest airports, Bangkok's Subarnabhumi International Airport on the southeast side and Don Mueang International on the north side of the city. Bangkok also has their own port on the Chao Phraya River that meanders through the city. However, the biggest and busiest shipping port is at Lem Chabang at the Bay of Thailand. From there, if we don't include all the cities that could be classified as connecting to the larger Bangkok Metropolitan Bay region, like Nontaburi, Chonburi, or Prakret, the second largest cities would be Hat Yai in the south, close to Malaysia, and Nakhon Ratchasima, just a bit up northeast from Bangkok. Nonetheless, due to the heavy demand for tourism, the second and third largest and busiest airports would be Phuket International on the west side and Chiang Mai in the north. Speaking of which, the country has about 1,430 islands and Phuket being the largest one, conveniently attached by a bridge to the mainland. The country has four main domestic rail lines that reach every corner of the country connecting to all their neighbors except Myanmar. There used to be a line now known as the Death Railway, but it was discontinued after World War II. Today they are working on rebuilding it though. Finally, Thailand has two international land disputes, one with Cambodia over the hill of Phnom Trap with the Preya Vihar Temple and the other with Malaysia here on the these incredibly small rocks in the middle of the sea known as Kokra and Losin Island. Losin has a small lighthouse and that's about it. Oh, and it's not a dispute, but Thailand also has this weird salient called the Three Pagodas Pass that juts into the Burmese town of Payatonzu along the border. This is one of the only few places where tourists are allowed to get a one-day visa to enter into Myanmar from Thailand if they wish. Just that I'd throw that in there. Keep in mind, oftentimes Thai people also divide their country into four to six cultural regions. What are these cultural regions, Julie? They are the Northern Thailand, Lana, and the Northern Eastern Thailand, Isan, Central Thailand, Siam, and Southern Thailand, what? Ta no Tam yeah. Wow, you never used that word. No. Wow. So how do you say Southern Thailand in Thai? Pak Thai. It's like literally Pak South Thai. Thai. Yeah. yeah. Correct me if anything is wrong. Please. Okay. Yeah. Now also in regards to Bangkok, Thais actually do not call it Bangkok. All right, so uh, how do you say Bangkok in Thai? Okay, so Gung Thep Mahanakorn Amon Ratana Gosin Mahin Tara Ayutthaya Mahadilok Pop Noparat Rashatani Burirom Udom Rashaniwe มหาสถานอมรพิมานอวตารสถิตสักกะทัตติยะวิษณุกรรมประสิทธิ์ <laughs>
<laughs> Literally the longest name of any city in the world with spacing. Now for many years, Bangkok was listed as the world's most visited city with over 22 million tourists, meaning that for the first time in the 21st century, they dethroned Paris. And you, Julie, are from there. We have 24 hours of food and we have a night market. We have an early morning market and we have great temples. Okay, enough about Bangkok though. Another thing you have to understand is that Thailand is administratively a constitutional monarchy. Who is the king, Julie? King Maha Rachlat Longkorn or Rama X of Chakri dynasty, taking the throne after his father died in 2016. He is believed to be one of the richest monarchs in the world and since 2020 has pretty much spent most of his time living in Bavaria, Germany after the pandemic. As a constitutional monarchy, all government affairs are handled by the National Assembly and Prime Minister since 1932. Nonetheless, even though the king's role is restricted by the constitutional law, he still holds a huge level of power and influence mostly thanks to the Thailand Laissez Majesté Laws. Yes. This means that people who criticize the king, his family, and even their pets can face heavy charges if it's strong or not. No comment. No, no comment. <laughs> Moving on. Much of what is now in Thailand started to develop about a thousand years ago when this person, Pa Kun Singh in Talatip, crowned himself the first king during the Sokotai era in 1238. Later, the Ayutthaya kingdom formed and eventually unified them in 1448 under King, how do you say that? Ramaswan? Lamaswan. Lamaswan. Yeah. The northern areas known as Lana had their own things going on, divided into five kingdoms. Long story short, they had a bunch of wars with Burma, what is now Myanmar. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to come in. They called it Siam. Over time, their global interaction developed more than yet. They never in became colonized. we never been colonized. Woo! Well, there was what the time the Imperial Japan got really close to war in World War II, but it was was like all right i'm taking over you you're gonna be part of my empire consider who's surrounding us that might not be a good idea oh yeah okay but you have to give me free passage and join us against the allied powers okay fine sure whatever do it i officially declare war on the u.s and britain oh i am not delivering this news to them Hey allies, I totally didn't mean to declare war on you guys. It was just a joke to make it look like we weren't against Japan. Wait, you declared war on me? Oh, I wasn't even paying attention, but uh, okay, sure. Woo! Saved by indifference. <laughs> hey guys, remember Aaron? Uh, he was in the Sylvan Talk episode. Haha. <laughs> and yeah, they got by. Yeah, never colonize, even with Japan. Well, in any case, with six UNESCO heritage sites, over 40,000 temples, Thailand is never short of notable places to see. And with that, uh, Som, why don't you take this, the notable places of Thailand. Som, you got this. We're out. Okay, so my most favorite place in Thailand, Phi Phi, that's like on the south of Thailand. It's a very beautiful island. Chiang Mai, definitely visit. It has a lot of culture. Chiang Rai, that's like a place that you can actually visit like a lot of elephant. They have like an elephant, what is that called? Like sanctuary. And you can also like see tribe people at um in a mountain in the north. Ayutthaya was capital city of Thailand like 100 years ago before before they moved to Bangkok, or old temple building, old palace. On the west is um, the city called Kanchanaburi that has a lot of beautiful waterfall. In the central of Thailand is called Lopbuli. That's like a city that's monkey everywhere. It's pretty interesting. People are not gonna rob you. It's gonna be monkey that try to steal stuff from you. It's really funny, but you gotta be careful if you go to that city. My favorite place that I always go is called Khao San Road. And then there's a lot of street food there on that um, street. You just visit. Thank you, Som. Well, we are just getting started because part of the reason Thailand is so colorful is because naturally it just is that way. That means we move on to the next segment. <laughs> So thanks to its location in the tropics, Thailand is no stranger to extreme nature conditions. You'll definitely see the side of Thailand if visiting. Thailand is located at the convergence of three major tectonic plates, the Australian, Indian, and Eurasian plates, with numerous fault lines cracking mostly throughout the west and northern parts of the country. These fault zones are essentially what create the shield of mountain ranges, like the Dangrek, Pichabun, the Dona, and the Thai highlands, where you can also find the highest peak of the country, Doi Intanon. In between these mountains, you have two incredibly 
historically lush and fertile flat areas, the central plain, known as the Chao Praia River Valley, and to the east, Korat Plateau, where you can find the longest river fully within Thailand, the Chi River. Otherwise, Thailand shares the mighty Mekong River on the border with Laos. The largest natural lake in Thailand is way down south, Songkla Lake, which is divided into three parts, and it does have an opening to the Bay of Thailand at the bottom part by the town of Songkla, which is why the lake has partly salty brackish water. Otherwise, up in the mountains in the west, the Sinakarin Dam is the largest reservoir in the country at over 17 billion cubic meters of water. Finally, the country is split up mostly into two separate climate zones. The upper part of the nation mostly lies in the tropical savanna or tropical monsoon zone, whereas the Kra Isthmus falls in the tropical rainforest zone. The country has three main seasons throughout the year, the cool, dry season between November and February, the hot season from March to May, and the monsoon season from June to October. During this time, the country is prone to the occasional typhoon on the east coast or cyclone to the west. Quick terminology recap, cyclones are for the southern hemisphere and Indian Ocean, whereas typhoon is for East Asian Pacific. Ta typhoons. <laughs> typhoons. <laughs> typhoons. <laughs> well, I just know that Thailand is very humid and a lot of mosquitoes. Nothing. I have a really bad allergic to mosquitoes. So when you go back to Thailand, it's like... It's like... Allergic a reaction a every day. But it's the motherland. I know. <laughs> well, in any case, Thailand is classified as newly industrialized country, making the eighth largest economy in Asia. Second, Southeast Asia after Indonesia. When it comes to business, Thailand is a hustler and we're good at it. Walking down the alleyways in Bangkok, you will find almost any type of vendor or profession, whether legitimate or questionable. We always have legitimate industry. <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? People always go towards the wacky side though. It's like, yeah, that's a stereotype. For one, since the 80s, Thailand has designated 25% of land area of forest protection and 15% of timber production. In addition, they are huge on the electronic sector, making up almost a fifth of all exports. Now here's where things start to kind of get into the gray zone-ish area. For Thailand, much of the economic activity and numbers are hard to accurately calculate because there is an entire informal sector with underground market activity. This is sometimes called a shadow economy. This could be anything from unreported or misreported vendor sales or illicit black market dealings. Thailand lies, everybody knows this, within the golden triangle. We already talked about this in previous episodes, overlapping three countries in Southeast Asia, which are widely known as the second largest opium producing area on earth after the Golden Crescent in the Middle East. Nonetheless, the government has been cracking down on these types of dealings and has been putting a heavier emphasis on a more positive sectors like Tourism, the most obvious one. Thailand tourism industry makes up nearly a fifth of GDP today and is projecting to grow to 30% by 2030. Instagram once ranked Thailand as one of the top ranked photograph locations on earth. Thailand offers many different types of tourism from medical, gastronomical, sport, and even nature tourism. And uh, speaking of nature, here's uh, Gary Harlow to explain. Yeah, uh, Caleb's not here, but uh, you know, the hat turns anybody into Gary Harlow. So, yeah, what's uh, going on, man? Ian, it's your turn. Oh, oh, you hold a man! Oh, whoa! So, thanks to their tropical climate, Thailand is definitely brimming with creatures of all sorts. There are 156 national parks, 50 Eight wildlife sanctuaries, 67 non-hunting areas, and 120 forest parks. Now this makes up a third of the entire country's territory. Now there's over 280 mammal species. Everything from leopards to Malaysian sun bears, gibbons, macaques, the Indo-Chinese subspecies of tigers, or tigers. <laughs> ah, whew, that'll wake you up in the morning. And speaking of felines, the Siamese cat actually originated here. I always thought it was Chinese, but no, it's here. it's here. Thailand. Now here you can also find the smallest mammal on earth called the Kittis hognose bat or the bumblebee bat. Now Thailand claims to have the world's first and largest crocodile farm. Now finally, we cannot forget the national animal, the Thai elephant. Today there's about 3,500 elephants that are in captivity and about a thousand estimated elephants in the wild. Now elephants are widely revered in Thailand and have played an important role in the country's history and especially to the royal family where the white elephant is their symbol. And the king specifically keeps a small number of white Thai elephants alive. They're presented at special events and, and so forth and whatnot. Ele Thai people and elephants, they're in, they like it. To, they, you know what I, you know what I mean. 
Now it looks like I'm, I'm gonna have to Ella phase my way out of here. <laughs> so I'm just saying, hey, what is happening to me? Thank you, Gary. Yes, Thailand's land is never short of provision. At one time, they were even the number one provider of rice in the world. And today, their cow homelet has been declared the world best rice seven times out of 13 world rice conferences. Thailand is heavy on gastro diplomacy, which the government initiated in the Global Thai program launched in 2000. Too. Basically, it's a culinary diplomacy initiative that they fund in order to promote Thailand via food across the world. This is why you can find Thai restaurants in some of the most remote places on earth. Even like the Arctic Svalbard Norway has a Thai restaurant. <laughs> to talk more about food, uh, why don't we bring up Anya? Anya! So guys, sorry, I like Looney Tunes, so that's my commentary. Just don't sue me, okay? When the culture is so huge in Thailand, we never sleep on the street, off the street, in a small alley. I think most people going out instead of cooking in. Like every region, they have their own food culture. Like in the north part of Thailand, khao soy. Khao soy is like a kind of noodle, curry noodle. On top of the noodle, they're gonna have the crispy noodle on top of that noodle again. And when you eat it, you mix it all together with the pickle and red onion. Noodle on noodle. Noodle on noodle. The sauce, I would say the most spicy Thai food. They have like gang tai pra, cooking, which is, it could be ribs or ground pork. Central, I think the most normal thing that people know is green curry or red curry. Khao man gai, pad si iu, pad thai, tom yam. Like the most popular ones you find at Thai restaurants yeah, are central? Like normal stuff. The northeast, my region, they have like a million kind of papaya salad. The taste is gonna be like sweet and it comes with peanut. Or you can have isan or lao dice, which is that come with like fermented anchovy fish sauce which is we call it tam pala or like fermented crab fermented fish sauce another dish is like lard and they usually have it with sticky rice the main dessert for me i think is mango sticky rice mm. i have my favorite spot mevari i think at pak soi thong lo that which is the best mango sticky rice in Tao for me Thank you, Anya. Two other things we should also mention. Thailand is one of the largest entomophagous countries on earth. That is, nations that have a high rate of insect consuming. And you can find that in the street stalls pretty much everywhere on Kalsen Road. And it's like a very snack that you can just enjoy. Also, uh, Red Bull was invented in Thailand. Gating dang. And it is stronger out there, isn't it? Like, way stronger. There was actually a report from Zenith International that stated Thai people consume more energy drinks than any other country in the world, averaging at about 11.4 liters per person. That's four times more than us Americans. Well, we do have a lot of energies. Speaking of the energy of the people, that brings us to the next segment, the... <laughs> Anya, Som, Julie, answer the question, what is a Thai person? Go. Thai person is like kind. We smile a lot. That's why we call land of smiles. Religious? Yeah, we are religious. Yeah, we are. Being I think we are an empath. <laughs> <laughs> We're an empath. We could be crazy sometimes. <laughs> yes. One thing that's for sure, Thais are very proud of being Thai. Every day at 8 p.m. and 6 p.m., the national anthem is played on loud speakers. Everybody just stops. And people would just stop for 40 second and it stand there until it's over. Anyway, the makeup of Thailand is very interesting too, and here's how it kind of breaks down. For one, Thailand has about 70 million people and the government officially recognizes 62 ethnic communities naturally found within the country. The largest group of peoples, of course, are the ethnic Thai people at somewhere around 86% of the population. However, it's a little more complicated. The Thais are kind of broken up into specific groups, the largest ones being the Korat Thai or the Central Thai people that are spread throughout most of the central parts of the country. They make up about 39% of the population. From there, the next largest group would be the Isan or Thai Lao, mostly found near the border of Lao. They make up about 28% of the population. From there, you have the Khon Wang at about 10% and Southern Thai at about 9%. The largest non-Thai groups though would be Malays, mostly in the border with Malaysia at about 4%. Cambodian or Khmer peoples, mostly in the border with Cambodia, make up about 2%. And about 8% of the country belongs to other groups, a huge chunk of this being Chinese. Thailand currency is bought. They use the types of ANC plug outlets and the drive is on the left side of the road. Yeah, they simply just did it because most of their neighbors were doing it and they just wanted to join along, not because of British influence. Never colonized. Never. 
Now, here's where things get a little confusing. Thailand actually has the largest Chinese community outside of Thailand at somewhere around 10 million or about a seventh of the population. However, this group of Chinese people or Sino-Thai people are actually fully assimilated into Thai society and often just call themselves Thai. They are mostly from southern China called Tao Chu in the Guangdong province. After years of intermingling, geneticists speculate that somewhere around 40% of the population of Thailand could have at least one Chinese ancestor. Today, most of them have actually adopted Thai last names or at least use Chinese last names and add Thai words to the end due to a law that states that people are not allowed to have the same last name if they are not related. Well, in any case, the Thai language is completely different from Chinese. It's actually part of the Thai language group which is related to Shan language in Myanmar and Lao in Laos. How much Lao can you guys understand? I would say like 70%. 60%? 60, 70 percent. Would you say Lao people can understand Thai better? Than... Of course, yeah. Yeah. because they, they consume yeah. our yeah, entertainment and stuff. So the Thai alphabet or Abu Gita is made up of 44 consonant symbols and 16 vowel indicators. Every Thai person knows the 44 pictures that go with the 44 consonants of the Thai script from G, chicken, to H, owl. Otherwise, Thai is a tonal language spoken with five tones, meaning you can make an entire sentence using just one syllable but changing the tone. For example, Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so that's that's is like my 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 no so doesn't burn. I love this one. Pa 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 pa. All right. Som hiu ka le na. Khap bai le bai na mai sori ba ni khap tam ka bai le nia. I'm gonna add subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> now officially, Thailand has freedom of religion. However, the vast majority are Buddhists at about 95 percent of the population. This makes Thailand the country with the second highest Buddhist population in the world after China, even though China is only about 20 percent Buddhist. It's interesting though. Thai Buddhism has a lot of traditional Thai folklore and Hindu overlap within it. Within temples and shrines, you might see many Hindu or folk deities depicted like Brahma. What is the spirit house? You put it there and then do some kind of ritual, you know, ceremony to bless in that house. For a then, blessing. Yeah, for a blessing so that that spiritual figure will protect your home mm. from harm. And you find them everywhere in Thailand. And they usually give them offerings like flowers, incense, fruits, and for some reason a lot of them have like strawberry fanta. That's like a thing oh, I see oh, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, because of the color. <laughs> the color yeah. red, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thailand also has a heavy culture of short-term Buddhist ordination in which many men are encouraged to serve as monks for a period of time. Monks are not allowed to touch women unless if it's like like an emergency, like if their mom is dying or something. Now, going to Thailand, you will notice how much the royal family is integrated into daily life. Every neighborhood has a shop and sell approved images of them, and they're always on the wall. We won't get too much into it because it'll take way too long to explain. It's a hot button issue amongst the people, but essentially, Thailand has had many controversial monarchy related incidences within their history. We're not gonna get much more into this. If you wanna say stuff, write it in the comments. Otherwise, we're gonna just move on. Okay? No comments. No comments. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's move on. Okay. What better way to move on, Paul? Mm -hmm. Sport. Sports, yes. And with that, here's art with the sports part. It's geography sports time. <laughs> He's so light. All right, so let's start off with the Asian Games. Bangkok has hosted them more than any other country in Southeast Asia. Moreover, Thailand has hosted more SEA games as well. Thailand also ranks high in badminton competitions, which is actually one of my favorite sports. I like badminton a lot. Did you know that? No. When I was in high school, I used to play a lot. For some reason, I always liked hitting that little birdie. Pun punish that little thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thailand usually ranks number one in Southeast Asia for football, soccer. These two guys here are probably the most famous footballers in Thailand. Alexander Albin is actually the only F1 racer known in Thailand. Thailand in total has 35 medals in the Olympics and 10 of those are actually gold. I don't know why I just did five. Five times two. <laughs> two fives. Math is Ten. Cool. The three events that Thailand has done well in the Olympics, weightlifting, boxing, and taekwondo. And speaking of combat sports, the moment you have all been waiting for. Best sport ever from Thailand, Muay Thai, known as the art of eight limbs. You can hit with your fists, your shins, your elbows, and your knees. And then pow, the match begins. But do not touch people on the top of the head. It's a big no-no in Thai culture. 
Oh, speaking of fighting, let's talk about Krabi Krabon. This is a traditional Thai weapon martial art form. The bodyguards of the royal family must be highly trained in this martial art form as well. Competitions and performances are really cool to watch. And finally, Thailand used to take part in this unique elephant polo competition known as the King's Cup. In 2018 though, it was announced that the competition would be discontinued after complaints filed by PETA. No more elephant polo. Well, they definitely complained about the elephant but not the horses. Hmm. What's up with that, PETA? Tarchin's segment on Geography Now is never going to be ended by PETA. That's it for me. Cheers. Thank you, Art. Well, fun fact about Thais. We're very competitive with beauty pageants. On any given day, there will be probably be some kind of beauty pageants going on with different types of people. And there's a lot of expectations. So much to talk about with Thailand's culture. So with that, here's Random Hannah to give you just a few more general overview factoids of Thai culture. <laughs> Hi guys, it's good to be back. And remember, you can get a random Hannah shirt at geographynow.com. She's wearing it. First thing, in Thailand, if you are on the phone receiving Thai text, you might see the number five a lot. Because in Thai, the number five is pronounced ha. So they're really just laughing. Ha ha ha. Every Thai at birth is given a nickname in addition to their regular name. It's based on an old superstition that evil spirits, or besat, these evil spirits are apparently constantly on the lookout for newborn children, and these nicknames apparently confuse them. Common nicknames include things like tadpole, fat, mouse, swan, and orange. At special occasions, you will often see people wearing traditional clothing. For women, a common thing you can see is a sing. It's an ankle length silk tube skirt. And for men, you can find a chong kraven, which is a lower body silk wrap pant garment. There are so many quirks and customs in Thailand. Everywhere you'll find the nung kwak. It's the beckoning lady statue that is said to bring business and love. She always does this. The number nine is considered lucky. Amulet culture and lucky charms are huge here. Taxis and bus drivers have altars on their dashes. Potted plant culture, or my dude, is a huge thing here as well. It dates back to the Ayutthaya period period, in which people needed to keep plants and crops portable in case floods washed them away. Thai people are obsessed with aromatherapy. They're most popular in the form of herbal balms or nasal sprays. This right here is called a yadon. Thank you Geography Pam for sending this on Fan Flag Friday. You will see people with these shoved up their noses everywhere in Thailand. Did you shove this in your nose and then give it to me? Not that one, I took the green one. Thais are also really into astrology. I'm an Aquarius. I don't know what that means, but this even ties into every day of the week. Each day of the week has a color code pertaining to each astrology god. So you might find people wearing more of a certain color on a certain day. In addition, there are a series of taboos and traditions that follow each day. For example, on Wednesday, you're not allowed to cut things, so often barber shops are closed on Wednesdays. And finally, Thailand has so many festivals and events they celebrate. It would take forever to list them all, but here are a few of the biggest ones. The Magic Tattoo Festival, Festival of Lights, the Monkey Buffet Festival, Festival. I yeah. want to go to that one. Buddhist festivals like Buddha's birthday and Maga Puja. The largest and most popular one though is the Songkran festival. It is celebrated throughout all of Southeast Asia. People shoot water guns and splash each other with water and everyone gets soaked. I know who I would shoot a water gun at. My husband because he is hot. <laughs> Anyways, whatever, here's Keith's music segment. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Random Hannah. What's up, everybody? Keith here. I am back in the wonderful state of Florida just because, well, Florida's just a million times better than California. But anyways, Thailand knows music and it seems everything in life incorporates it. Even before Muay Thai matches, they play music as the fighters do their ritual dances. Thais will probably say the two largest traditional styles are Luk Tung and Moor Lam. Luk Tung is a country folk style with lyrics that reflect the trials and tribulations of rural life. Every Thai person will say these people are probably the most iconic folk artists. Otherwise, more Lam is mostly performed in the northeast part of the country, close to Laos. It is described as being folk but faster with a funk feel. A funky feel, if you will. Usually folk music is accompanied by traditional instruments such as these. I'm going to point to this list right here. Thailand dance is also pretty crazy to watch, especially Kone. It is Thailand's traditional mask dance done with golden costumes. It's pretty dope because who doesn't love gold? Everybody loves gold. In fact, most Thai Thai people are capable of doing complex double-jointed dance gestures. I don't know, is that 
Does this mean I'm double joining? Otherwise, since the 90s, Thai pop or T-pop has been ever growing in the music industry, some top performers you suggested include this list right here. And before I go, one band in particular that I must mention because, well, I'm Keith and I love metal bands and we all know this, but at this point, um, there's a band from Thailand which is called Retrospect and they have a song called Betrayed. Really great song, really great band. Uh, the Sumerian core era of like bands like Born of Osiris and those influences spread throughout the world. And But anyways, that's it for me. Thank you so much all to the Thai subscribers. You guys are really great and um, that's it for me. Thank you, Keith. Well, that was a lot. A lot. What are your favorite festivals of Thailand? Well, it's in Gop. Gop Pangan, yeah? It's kind of like the Burning Man kind of party or <laughs> even Coachella or like if you love music, mm -hmm. definitely, you would definitely go to the Full Moon party in okay. Gop Pangan. Well, one thing that Thailand is definitely known for is the way how they interact with the rest of the world. Which brings us to the final chapter of this episode, the... So, due to their location and culture, Thailand has quite a history of branching out both to their neighbors and abroad. One thing's for sure, Thailand has definitely made themselves known throughout the world. Here's how kind of plays out. For one, Thailand is of course a huge international tourism hotspot, so of course everyone from Australia to Austrians love visiting, especially during peak season during December and February when the weather is the best. Nonetheless, no shocker, China alone outnumbers all of them combined, taking up over a quarter of the entire tourist demographic. Obviously, as mentioned, Thailand has the largest Chinese population in diaspora outside of China, let alone having much of their people historically intermarry and mix with Thai people. The only hiccup in relations with China took place in the 50s when this former prime minister in instituted lots of anti-Chinese campaigns and restrictions. Also, occasionally China keeps a close eye whenever Taiwan wants to get close to Thailand as well. But today, they are close. They share numerous bilateral agreements like a free trade zone. China is their largest import partner. Their militaries cooperate and the two are cool with each other. With that, India comes in and it's more of a historic and cultural bond that dates back thousands of years within the Indosphere. Not only did the Buddhist faith migrate out of Northeastern India, some argue Nepal, let's not get into that, but the Thai language also borrows a substantial amount of words from Sanskrit, as well as Pali, the sacred language of Theravada Buddhism. India has very close extradition treaties. They have infrastructure investment deals, especially in the India-Myanmar-Thailand highway project, and they have a growing education exchange program. The U.S. has had relations with Thailand since the 19th century, when the Treaty of Amity and Commerce was signed in 1833, therefore making them the first nation in Asia to have formal diplomatic relations with the U.S. Yes, even before China. From there, relations have only grown. Later, Thailand joined CEDO, which led to the Rusk Tanat Agreement. In 2003, they were labeled a major non NATO ally. However, the closest inner circle to Thailand, though, would have to be their fellow ASEAN nation countries. Granted, they've had quite a few historical wars with the Burmese, but nonetheless, best friends. Malaysia is the second largest tourist demographic, and many have family just over the border in South Thailand. Indonesia is kind of like the mediator between them and any drama they might have on the border with Cambodia. The Philippines shares a lot of similar cultural tropes with Thailand. It's almost like just replaced the Buddhist backdrop with a Catholic like one and they are almost indistinguishable. When it comes to their best friend within this group though, nearly every single Thai person I've ever talked to has mentioned the same country, Lao. Lao is like the little sister of Thailand that has a slightly different way of doing things, but overall they totally get each other. It all started back in the 15th century in the Ayutthaya Kingdom, and you know, despite being under French Indochina and having some skirmishes on the border with Thailand and claiming that the Emerald Buddha was theirs and later installing a government that kind of favored Vietnam, regardless, they are still considered the closest relatives within the area and have deep ties. Thais. They speak nearly intelligible languages, they are both predominantly influenced by Buddhism, and after you peel back all the layers of historical trauma, they cannot deny that in the end, they will always be family and care for each other. In conclusion, you're the Thai people, I'm gonna head out, you guys take it, Ray, set, go. Long tail boats, street vendors, lots of good food, a lot of beautiful people, and a lot of smiles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's pretty fun to party. Fun people to hang out with. Lots of fortune tellers. Empath. Sensitive. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so go back. That was the episode. Hope you had a good one. Thank you guys for joining. Ooh. Thank you. Togo is coming up next.